Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So I'm in the BMW 130i today and we are going to be adjusting the parking brake or the handbrake, whatever you want to call it. So at the moment, my parking brake is pretty much non-existent. I have to yank it all the way to the top, probably about seven or eight clicks. And even then, it really doesn't hold on even the slightest of inclines. I always have to um, park it in gear. And um, yeah, I want to correct that today. I want to get it down to about, you know, three or four clicks and then it, you know, so I can hold it on a, on a hill without having to pull it right up. Um, now, obviously I've done this on my BMW E65 series and I'm pretty sure the uh, process is pretty much the same. You know, the, the cog, the adjuster cogs in the hubs may be in a slightly different position, but we'll do some uh, investigating and we'll find out uh, what the case is with that. Um, but yeah, I think we'll, we'll think we'll get outside and uh, get the car up in the air and uh, yeah, let's see what we're working with. Okay then, so the car is up in the air and as you can see, the wheel is off. Now, bear in mind, you don't have to take the wheel off, but it just obviously eliminates the risk of you damaging the wheel and it does make access quite a bit easier. Now, how the parking brakes work on these hub setups is there is two shoes, one on either side, and they basically push outwards against the inside of the brake disc and that is how the handbrake setup works. Now, essentially what we are going to be doing today is finding through one of these holes, obviously I have to turn the disc to locate a tiny little cog, which we will then rotate with a flat bladed screwdriver until we get this to the tension that we want it. Okay then, so I have located the adjuster cog on this side and it's kind of at 10 o'clock, it's just above a spring. You can get at it with the flat bladed screwdriver. Now, bearing in mind the handbrake is off. So what I want to do first is I'm actually going to adjust this all the way so that this locks solid. As you can see, it's still spinning. But what I want to do is adjust this all the way so it stops spinning completely. Then we have a reference point then. So I'm not really sure which way I'm supposed to be doing this, but obviously time will tell after I've done it. Few. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it's getting stiff now, so I guess it's that way to make the shoes expand. I can feel it's getting tight now. Okay, then, so we have adjusted this and we cannot turn it. We cannot turn the brake there, so this is pretty tight now. Now, what I'm going to do is pop the wheel back on and see how much I can move it then. Obviously, with the wheel on, I'll have more torque to turn it, and then we'll see how much play there is. Okay then, so the wheel is back on, and as you can see, you can turn it slightly, but that's good. That's what we want. Now, obviously, we're gonna to have to back this off somewhat and then apply the handbrake to see kind of where we want it. Like I said, I want it at around three or four clicks and this will hold steady. So we're gonna to have to do some adjusting now. Okay, so let's test the handbrake lever itself. So we'll try two clicks. One, two, and then we'll see if we can turn the wheel. Yeah. That's fixed solid, that means it's way too tight. We want this to be the case when it's on like three or four clicks. So yeah, this obviously needs backing off a little bit. So I've let the handbrake lever down now and obviously we can move this slightly, but I think I'm actually gonna leave the wheel on. I think that's actually gonna be the easiest. Obviously we don't need to make too many adjustments now, so I'm not gonna cause too much damage to the wheel. So let's let's line it up and find where the cog is again. There we go. And I'm just going to back that off slightly and then keep testing with the lever until this is firm with about three or four clicks. Okay, that's a lot freer now. Now let's apply 
three or four clicks on the handbrake lever itself and see if this stays firm. So, one click. Yeah, still move it. Two. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Four. Just about, but I'm relatively happy with that, to be honest. I think that'll hold with four to five clicks. Yep, that's good enough for me to be honest. Okay then, so now all we're gonna do is the exact same on the other side. And bear in mind, the adjuster cog is on the opposite side. So instead of being at 10 o'clock, it's more at like two o'clock. So I'm just gonna adjust this all the way until I cannot rotate the brake disc anymore. It might actually, it might, I might have to rotate the cog the other way as well. I'm guessing that might be the case. It's getting tighter, doesn't seem to be. Okay then, so I've tightened this one up. It can no longer move. I'm gonna put the wheel back on, check what it's like with the handbrake lever. Then obviously we can make our adjustments. Okay, so now that the wheel is back on, let's see if we can move it, which we can. Obviously it's quite difficult, but there is quite a bit of play in it, which is good. It means we haven't got to adjust it as much. So now what I'm gonna do is head into the car and uh, see what it's like on one, two, three, and four clicks. So one. Yep. Two. Just about. Three. Could do that with two hands. But I think we need to take it off one more click and it should be where we want it then. I think that was a click. Let's soon find out. Let's just go straight in with three clicks. One, two, three. Let me compare that with the other wheel. Yeah, that's about the same. Okay then, so that is pretty much both sides exactly where we want them. So if we go inside the car, let's do the lever. So put it on three. One, two, three. They'll pretty much hold on three. But if you use two hands, that will move. Obviously, when we put it on four or even five, they are not moving even on the steepest of hills. Okay then, so that is the parking brake fully adjusted on the BMW 130i. Now bear in mind, this process is the exact same on many different BMWs, you know, so you've got the BMW 1 and 3 series of the same era. You know, they all share the same uh, chassis setup, they all share the same hubs. Um, so the process is the exact same. Um, and if you have a different BMW, chances are the process is gonna be very, very similar. You know, I have the BMW E60 also, and the process is very, very similar. Like I said, the only thing that's different is the location of the adjusting cogs on the hubs. Um, but yeah, this is really something that, you know, you can do at home. Please, please, please do not uh, go to a garage and, you know, let them charge you for this job as long as you have access to a jack you know you can get the rear of the car up in the air and you have a flat bladed screwdriver you know you can do this job now obviously i kind of changed my method halfway through um i would in fact start with the wheels off to adjust the cog um, all the way to get the um hubs nice and tight to get the brake discs um, tight on the hubs. Um, I would do that without the wheels off just because obviously that's when you're doing the majority of the adjusting um, so it's going to really save um, you know scraping your wheels um, but when it comes to the final adjustments where you've literally just got to do one or two um, rotations of the sorry not rotation one or two adjustments of the cog 
um, then you know I'll just do that with the wheels on because obviously you can gauge better with the wheel on because you get more torque when you rotate the wheel it's obviously a lot harder to rotate the brake disc so yeah it's best to do the final adjustments with the wheels on if you can um, it's one of them jobs which is a little bit fiddly you know you can't really see what you're doing you kind of just have to locate the um, cog and then get your screwdriver on it and kind of feel um, your way through it um, but yeah it's definitely something that you can do just a little bit of time and patience and um, yeah it's just a case of trial and error to be honest uh, like I said I have the handbrake exactly where I want it you know it's holding um, at around three to four clicks and it's holding completely um, at around five which obviously you know I can have it on a very very steep hill now and um, it's not going to go anywhere I don't now need to leave it in gear I probably still will leave it in gear because you know it's always uh, a good habit to have um, if for whatever reason your handbrake does fail um, then you know if it's in gear it's not really going to roll anywhere obviously have it in the um, relevant gear to which way you're pointing down the hill you know if you're pointing up the hill like the front of the car is up the hill uh, pointing up the hill then obviously leave it in first if you're pointing down the hill obviously leave it in reverse um, that, that's just common sense but yeah i hope this video has been somewhat helpful um, i hope you have enjoyed it um, i've got so many more videos to come on this car uh, please give it a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and i'll see you all in that next one. Peace.